There you go. Yes. <laughs> We're here. Success. Oh, my. Sorry about that. That was difficult, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's your first one, so that's kind of how it goes. Yes, exactly. Oh, hold up. I have to set up the light again. Yes. Try to make it cozy here. Oh, it looks nice. Back again. Good to see you. You too. Thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm really good. Today was a bit um, kind of off day. Um, had a lot of mean time, but I had to uh, do some things. Tomorrow I have a, another live stream with uh, DJ <laughs> Irene from the Netherlands for Hi. Wednesdays on Wax. That's the Dusty Donuts uh, mm -hmm. online wax talking format nice. with Mark Hype and so yes yeah, so did some things with that and some other um job possibilities for December. I mean can't can't say no to those. <laughs> There's nothing to do at least but like uh something's happened. Yeah. I don't know but but something will come up you know and now I'm really glad to uh be your guest tonight. Oh, I'm really glad to have you. Uh, yeah. So this is Lara, aka the Sound Sommelier, here with DJ Robert Smith. Um, normally, my first question is, what's your early memory of hip hop? But I read that yours is not much different than mine; that it all kind of started with a mixtape. Um, right. So my question to you is, who gave you the mixtape, and what were some of the songs on it? I um, the, I, I show you the mixtape first. Oh, nice. So that is from DJ Smithist. I love that you still have it. And I still have it, yeah. That's uh, and I just met him last week, and I told him that he was the reason why I'm uh, doing this for more than twenty years, and uh, that he showed me how to control turntables. And he said, like, he can't even remember that. Okay. <laughs> so I, I told him about the tape, and um, and yeah. So that was that was there was so much early '80s and mid '80s. Uh, for example, the Sugar Gang. Um, of course, The Furious Five, Eric B, Fearless Four, and uh, Fat Boys, the T Ski Welly, Run DMC, all those classic hits. And he mixed it up in a like in the first hip hop way I ever listened to a to mixtape somehow, you know, like cutting it together. And that was incredible. And uh, yeah. Okay, yours was way more professional than mine. Mine were just a bunch of songs on a tape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I mean, the, <laughs> the very not early days. <laughs> yeah, the very early days, I mean, we, we all just had cassettes and taped yeah. it from our radios, right? Yeah, right. Um, are there records you recall hearing in your home? Not necessarily hip-hop, but what are some of the, like, earliest, what was some music that played in your house when you were a child? Oh, my, and, and my house, actually, I come from a house, my, like, I had to, I would say, like, teach myself uh, to have a good music. The music, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, exactly. So, like, my parents listened to some German music, or I don't know. They, they, my, my dad was big in uh, Rolling Stones, Beatles. He liked that a lot. And my mom, she really uh, did not really care about <laughs> music. It was just going around. And so, um, yeah. So somehow, a friend of mine, a um, couple of uh, like, actually around the corner, he uh, was. I would say five years older than me and um mm -hmm. and he was um they they back in the days you know i'm coming from the gdr like uh east berlin so um so there were no uh, uh vhs cassette recorders and some but some had it because they came from the west and they had a vhs uh, recorder mm -hmm. and uh, he was watching all those movies like um Batman and like the very early ones or Star uh, Star Wars and and one day he uh, we were watching uh, the kid and play's house party so that <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so that with the flats up nice. right with the kind of paint mm -hmm. and like they like the dancing and like the sound just took me and like took me in a uh, like was the virus for me to to do this as well I love it. yeah. Um, so what was the scene like back then, kind of when you were a little bit older and you had a, a sense of what it would have been like? Uh, the scene, I mean, I could tell you when I was, uh, when I started to, to go, uh, to hip hop parties, uh, when I was mm -hmm. 16, I had the very early ones, um, and, and Berlin was very dark and, um, 
Right. It was it was very underground. It was it was super dope. I mean, Mark Hype, he's um, eight years older than me, so he was right. even there, <laughs> you know, like he was playing. And uh, but um, for me, that was crazy to see, like being in, in basements uh, and uh, like like the whole club was full of smoke and, uh, and like music I never experienced before was playing and people went crazy dancing and it was wild and rough and everything was possible so there were no rules that was crazy to see and 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 um yeah so I would say I also was able to have one of the very good uh, and best times Berlin had in, in, in club years so every everything is now shut down and it's not right. how it used to be well hopefully it'll not come back because i don't think anything will ever like return to what it used to be but hopefully something will yeah i hope so be, be reborn that, yeah that, that berlin is famous for 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 partying 24 7 365 days a, a year right and right love parades possible. in berlin right oh oh hell yeah um uh, mark just passed me a list of closed clubs in, only in berlin so mm -hmm. it was I was starting to scroll it down. It was a never any list. And it was like, I think almost 500 clubs are closed in Berlin. Yeah. That, that's incredible. And uh, so that's what we do. We're streaming from, from home and try to right. deliver good feelings. Right. Create, like recreate the club vibe somehow. Yeah, it's really, exactly. It's really hard to do. But um, like if you're in a good mood, uh, like people will realize and, and you will infect and, and spread the vibe. It's even I, more difficult through those glass windows and stuff, right. but yeah. I agree. Um, so I saw a throwback post uh, with a photo of you at 15 when you first started DJing. <clears throat> Do you remember your first gig, like the first time you got paid to DJ? Um, I think it, I was, that picture was when I was 19 or something. Oh, or I thought I read that you were 15. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was 18 to 19 and and hell yeah, I mean, the, the very first time being in a club, I, like, I did not even have a lot of records. I just wanted to be a scratch DJ. And um, so, um, but so the very first party was my friend, DJ Smithers, you know, uh, he had um, a lot, a huge record collection. He was spinning records like crazy. And so we built up a second, a, a third turntable and one mixer. And I was scratching when he was playing instrumentals, for example, that was my very first, uh, kind of DJ gig and I was able to use the uh, allowed to use some of his records and and yeah and, and and that was crazy club was full there was one of those basement clubs mm -hmm. uh, and um, that was incredible that was really really dope and to see what you can do and then like yeah that sounds crazy for your first gig <laughs> yeah that was crazy and uh hell yeah uh, I I, I I couldn't get enough. <laughs> it less to yeah, me. obviously. Um, so when you go digging, which genres do you spend the most time with? Like which areas of a record store? Um, these days, I'm I'm really looking for um yacht rock kind of things or soft rock. Like there mm -hmm. are so many, so many music. So so much music you can't discover for like not in a lifetime, but like, this is like the sound that kind of is interesting to me. And before I was collecting, like, uh, like I show you, like, for example, like Am Amiga crowd rock stuff, uh, Manfred Krug, for example, like mm -hmm. very, very big sample record. And, um, and also um, Amiga, the GDR label, like pop uh, records, right. also very, uh, I like those, uh, special sounds but of course I like the um, OG samples where hip-hop um, hits were made of you could say right, right? so uh, so that's actually what I'm looking for and of course uh, the very new thing I do is um, looking for for nice uh, 45s like those small sevens mm -hmm. that's that's the new thing and um, yeah I read that you kind of just got into those this year yeah right like just started with it yeah uh, and, uh, I'll, t I'll ask you more about that later. <clears throat> I am. Um, but um, so I've seen kind of side note, uh, I've seen you post a bunch of bad basketball in the NBA. Uh, where did your love for the game begin? As a fellow uh, I see I see my friend Jay Sanctuary is in online here. Big shout outs <laughs> to my friend Jay, because uh, I teamed up with him back in the days uh, for the club called Tip In. And um, uh, we were hanging out 
back then when we were 13 like and it was a it was a, a basketball field where all the uh, baskets were just like hanging in 270 like the the, the height so it was a dunking <laughs> basketball place right like a, so, right. so we were able to dunk like crazy and and this is uh, when it all started and even before in, in school times and yeah, then we met we met in club and uh, telling me says exactly we want to get better and we wanted to, we we didn't want to play for fun we wanted to have a competition and to learn the technique of being a good basketball player so that um, also means to to do something for it you know like if you want to if you want something you have to work for it hard and like we really uh, we got drilled from our um, tr uh, trainer and uh, that was uh, yeah great great time great time and. Um, so and and then watching the NBA, I was able to watch um, Michael Jordan play the the, the Bulls finals back in ninety five, ninety six, and so long. And that was crazy. And I mean, that I would say that was the, even before music was the most the the most important part of my life. Like I w I wanted to be a basketball player, and <laughs> so um, I, we had a dream, and that was um, that was our thing to do. What we had to do, and we had so many so much time to 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 do whatever we want to do right so right. um yeah we so yeah mm. um never know i could come back uh when did <laughs> <laughs> when did smith and smart come together um that was actually two years after i played my first show i would say so so in that club well i was spinning and scratching my friend maxwell from smith and smart he was there so he was actually where um where my first gig took place. And he said, that's crazy what you're doing. Um, I just, um, I'm doing music for eight or nine or 10 years already. And I dropped some records and, um, and da da da. And, 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 and actually um, my band just, um, uh, how do you say, um, split it. And, and he wants to be, um, he, he needs a DJ. Uh, that could um, he could work out some 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 shows and I was like damn that is actually what I want to do I and <laughs> so I was, I was super naive and I said yeah let's do this I gave him my, my number and um, yeah then then next day I was calling him up or he was calling me up and then somehow the next week he came to my parents house wow. I, had a, I, okay. I, had a, I had a room in the basement of course from my parents house right uh, we just uh yeah it, it clicked and so since then it's like so i would say 2001 was like when we first met oh, and came almost together. Mm -hmm. yeah and, and right after that we met the first time in uh, my parents uh, house another week later uh, i had my first show like rap concert nice that was crazy uh, that's it's crazy so ha did it seem like more people were paying attention to your moves after you won the shook one scratch challenge in 2016 oh yeah definitely um i um i must say i i never i i always denied being part of the instagram and facebook community uh i did not even have a um iphone and um nothing like really i was like oh go away with that and uh, <laughs> my friend uh captain crunch uh from from the uk um, he said, you've got to show your skills, like you're crazy fam. I was like, ah, yeah, no, other, uh, much better. So anyway, he set up the, um, <laughs> yeah, he set up, he set up the IG account, uh, on my uh, 35th birthday. And, um, and then I think it was just a year late. Yeah. Just a, a year later, this good, the Chuck one scratch challenge took place. And another friend of mine, uh, she told me, Hey, there's a challenge going on, like take part. And and that thing, uh, like the uh, mob deep acapella, I was scratching for another ten years even before the challenge. So I was uh, familiar with the uh, with the acapella, and I knew what to do. So it didn't really took long to record the whole routine. And I didn't even I I just did it what I did before, and somehow that thing was the first viral hit for me. And mm -hmm. and somehow from one day to the next, there were like two thousand five hundred more follower, wow. and and the biggest of them like like. The, all those greatest DJs, I just, um, I, I, I dreamt of being being part of of the community. They suddenly followed me. They wrote messages. They shared it everywhere. That went crazy. So um, since that day, um, I was completely on on another map, even for the Americans worldwide. So 
and I didn't even know who Scratch Bastard was. Right. <laughs> so that was that was really crazy. So that was the very first success for me, um, and made me even better to to keep keep scratching, keep practicing. Yes. Amazing. Uh, is it the Kami World Classics? Is that how you pronounce it? It is the Kami World Classics. It's from uh, I think uh, DJ Spell. Uh -huh. from, it's not Australia. It's New Zealand. Ah. It's coming from New, Z New Zealand. Mm -hmm. he, he was also a DMC champion. Uh, nice. 2016, so, yeah, he came up with it. So you were a finalist at the Kami World Classics Europe and the DMC Germany Championship the following year. What did those accomplishments mean to you at that point in your career? Uh, similar to, uh, to the, to the uh, Shook Ones Challenge, but even when I, when I won it, I did not even thought like a year later or right after the moment nothing really happened and uh, nothing changed but now after two or three years um uh, like people have even much more respect for for having a title and for for being part of that crazy scratch scene and um yeah i mean i was i was like crazy and 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 practice every day and i was in, in, into my bubble and and I want to show everybody like still i want to show everybody what i can do even better right but like i can remember that the time was super super crazy i dropped like two <laughs> videos each each week or some sometimes three i was i was crazy and and i, I just wanted to to prove that this is no this is no uh, accident this is this is this comes because i do something for it you know and, and i always try to come up with something i never did before and um so i was super hyped i was super hyped and uh and, and crazy to see that um dj woody for example he was judging uh was part of, of, of the judges or uh, dj brace and all those greats you know like champion world champions and i was uh being judged from them from them and yeah nice. maybe better i just can't say it. the competition made me better it makes sense because you, you you were waiting so long to kind of let the world know how good you were, so you had to prove yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I had to make. Yeah, I gotta make. A, let me let me shout out some people. Yeah, right yeah go ahead. Like, I, like so many friends came to watch. I mean, we have eleven o'clock <laughs> in Berlin time. Some people have to work, maybe. So uh, Jay, big up Simon, they're, my friend. They're representing. Yeah, right. My friend Simon is in here. DJ Timberine is in here. Uh, oh man, so many. <laughs> and all your friends are in here. That's very good. Sasha, Sasha, Sasha looks, hey, big ups. <laughs> um, so I right, had to make sure, it's okay. I had to make sure I asked about your mix, uh, the Christopher Wallace story, tribute to the T Notorious B.I.G. for all my Brooklyn heads. Why is Biggie so important to you as a hip hop DJ? That is a very good question. And, um, I'm... Um, I, I couldn't even tell you. Like I would like like could you tell me why he is so important? Because I'm I'm <laughs> No, why is he important to you? Like what did his music mean to you as a DJ? I think he's 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 just a gentle gangster and like he was he com he com combined R and B with rap, like gangster rap and R and B and was always and, and Puffy produced it so well, so somehow it it came, it came, I don't know what, what just happened, like similar to Tupac on, on the other side. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, like even people don't, um, it, it, people don't even listen to hip hop. They, they listen to Biggie and the hypnotized joint, for example, you know, everyone right. can sing that song and even like the discos. <laughs> uh -huh. Like ladies, people actually listening to techno or whatever, they dance into to Biggie. That's, that's weird. So, <laughs> It must that's be the so voice, true. but they don't even have an idea. They don't even understand the lyrics. What are you saying? But people are dancing. It's a swag. Um, what did it mean to become a member of the Superhero DJs in 2018? Yeah, another, another, um, another uh, small success um, to be uh, asked, um, uh, making a, a routine there. And, and um, uh, you know, uh, DJ Procycle, uh, is, uh, he's like, three-time world champion, also mm -hmm. Berliner. And um, um, he he just called me up. We never, you know, never had any contact before, but somehow 
or because of the success DMC champions and all that. Like someone, uh, someday he, he called me up and asked me. And, and so, yeah, it's ev everybody comes more closer together. Um, back in the days it was Elbow Society, but now I feel it's more the community. So it's very good to, to uh, give something to the people that really are interested in scratching and to, to show and try to uh, explain it in a, in, a, in, a, in a gentle way, maybe, or in an easy way, you know? Right. I'm sure a lot of people are really intimidated by it. Yeah, some of them. Like, it's very nice to see, uh, to get messages. And, and, and some people really, they completely copy my routines. That is crazy. So they <laughs> completely, le they learn it from, from, nice. from the tutorial, tutorial <laughs> media. And then they post it up their own videos. And it's crazy how to see how they just breath, like, um, in I inhaled think, it. I think that has to be the same feeling as when um, MCs or singers, like, see a crowd singing their lyrics or rapping along with them. It has to be a similar kind of feeling. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, Scratch Bastard referred to your submission in 2019's Come Down Scratch Challenge as the tightest entry to his ears. How did it feel to take top prize in another one of his Scratch Challenges? I mean, that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> He did it again, <laughs> and uh, that was. Uh, or you did it again. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, just made me better again. I can say it. It's 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 a it's a big thing, and 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 it's a big honor to also come back in another um, uh, uh, competition and and win it again. That's crazy. That's really means a lot. Means a lot, and um, yeah. Right. Um, so you've played for many crowds in Europe as well as across the U.S. Where have some of the best shows been? Like, where do you think the best crowds are? <clears throat> the best crowds? I mean, I, in, in the U.S., I only was in, in uh, downtown L.A. And uh, mm -hmm. it, was a, it, it was an event show for Guest USA. Mm -hmm. That's a brand, an uh, Italian brand. And it was like high society um, festivals. So they just built everything up just for what, that one day. And and it was like a like a fashion show, like so so with mm -hmm. models from all over the world, and we hung out with them in the bus and driving to downtown LA, and that crazy guess Z trip was playing afterwards. Uh, uh, <laughs> we we hung out in the Beverly Hilton. Uh, David Foss, uh, he was making a concert just for the for the mm -hmm. guests of guest jeans. That was crazy. Okay. So we had a like dinner in the Beverly Hilton, and and we lived in in a, in a um. A Beverly uh, Boulevard, um, Sophie, Sophie Tell, like a very rich. Oh yeah, we have that here in New York too. Mm -hmm. Oh my! So that was just so. So it was kind of work and one week paid holidays, and that was crazy. And uh, I couldn't. The time flew by, and I, that, that was crazy. Also, one of the best times I had, I must say. So, uh, but I want to come back to the U.S. one day and maybe um, connect uh, with to. the DJ with the DJ community. So almost in 2020, it almost um, happened. But uh, unfortunately, Corona said no, right? Just not this year and maybe not next year. Exactly. <laughs> but in the future. Um, I think you're building a good following right now. <clears throat> uh, so it looks like you get blessed on the regular with some fresh new gear. What's your current setup looking like? Uh, I can show you. So that's of the new um, reloop turntable. Nice. That's very dope. You can make music with it with these patterns right here. And there is the uh, reloop elite. That's the the mixer from uh, from reloop and yeah and another turntable right here nice. of course. And um, I see the Nas yeah. record over there. <laughs> Say it again. I saw the Nas record. The Nas record. Where is ah yeah exactly. There it is. <laughs> Open up. There it is. Yes. Uh, tell me about your Do It For The DJ series. Uh, very interesting question. Um, today I had a, I had a small chat with uh, Q Ball from QNC. Um, do you know QNC from back in the days? Kirk no. Gazzaro and Q Ball? Great. Q Ball sounds familiar, but I don't know QNC. Yeah, great, great, great rappers. One of my favorite rappers. And, um, they dropped an album it's called the dynamic duo and one song was called um for the love and so this is where that part i do it for the djs comes from oh, okay. and i heard that sample on a danny spice version together 
uh, Danny Spice and the cuts made Mr. Thing from the UK. And, mm -hmm. and I always loved that song and, and like the, do it for the DJs. And so I thought about, okay, I'm, I'm doing it for the DJs and I want to represent my, my, my uh, DJ skits come and, and my, my, like my finest transitions and nice. original habits and, and uh, my, my own production and bring it uh, into one mix so you can dance you can listen you can have you can just vibe you can just you can cruise whatever you know it's just it's it's coming from from the heart and it's it's all about a good feeling you know and 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 you know i i, I comes from the from the heart and the, the the second part as well there was more my own production or um feature appearance on tracks i did and and these days i'm i'm very lucky to say that I um, I have um, I, I had some uh, international uh, feature appearance from from France to um, from the, to the USA with a Superstition. Big shout out to Superstition. Uh, Just chatting uh, about you last night. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was writing with him too, and I have seen that. It's crazy. So he's he's one of my favorite dudes out there. Like and and a dope track will come soon. I can tell you that. And. Um, yeah german productions and and that is actually to show what like that i that i'm not that i can play with so many good good people and 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 there's even so much music you have to discover you don't even know yeah. so that actually do it for the djs and uh yeah it's my point of view <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, so I've been a co contributing writer to Brooklyn Radio for about 10 years now. Uh, so it was a surprise to learn that about your Unops Drops Volume 2 mix. Had you and Unops already been collaborating before this? Um, it's, it's very good. I was uh, also calling Patrick today, DJ Unops, uh, the one who's running the show uh, for seven years now. And I was actually asking him, uh, how, did we, how did we get to know each other? And uh, it's exactly, he wrote me... Um, <laughs> He wrote, he messaged me on, on IG and, um, and so um, we did not um, collaborate before, but we will collaborate from that point on. And uh, he brought out some, I think now he brought three 45s uh, out uh, from my, uh, from my uh, project Slick Walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it, it appears on Agogo Records and, and I had, I think, three shows at the Brooklyn Radio. Unops nice. drops. So somehow mm -hmm. I, I I made some scratches for his intro for his show uh, and, and and so many other things. So somehow um, out of a sudden he, he just came into my life and we we never even met before even oh and, and it, but we fed the vibe and we just started to work and uh, but yeah oh that, that's 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 what it should be mm -hmm. uh, just to 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 feel feel the vibe and to. You don't have to know each other so well. Just like if you feel a vibe, we can work together and make everything happen. Right. Uh, I owe a lot to Brooklyn Radio. I've inter interviewed a lot of really amazing people because yeah, of that. Yeah, I've seen that. You, got, you better uh, check that out, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what brought you to the Serato Studios in London at the beginning of 2020? Uh, I have. I think I have to shout out DJ Angelo from the UK as well. Like um, he is working for Reloop, so um, okay. I'm. Yeah, he he's working there for more than ten years, I guess. Now he's living around the corner here. That's uh, crazy. Oh. And um, nice. um, and he really um, he he, how do you say in English? Uh, he said he said you gotta book that guy. You gotta you gotta <laughs> invite DJ Robert Smith to the Serato Studios. Um, uh, and Blakey, who is running the uh, Serato Studios, uh, he messaged me, and we made a. I had to deny a couple of um, <laughs> a couple of um, dates because I was I was touring and I did not have time. So the third, uh, so I said, okay, um, uh, in a half a year I, we can do it. So that was very long term, and mm -hmm. then I just flew in, and that was crazy. And um, yeah, I. Um, also was able to visit my friend Captain Crunch and uh, yeah, that was, it was great. And then that was, so I did, I, I was well prepared before I came to the studios. And um, so I, I just um, made my take in a one take. So I warmed up a bit and then we said, okay, set up the cameras, let's go red, red <laughs> lights on. And that like was the one take and that's it. So, and then we hung out a bit and pressure was off. So good. 
Nice. Uh, I think your boy Q Ball's in here now that you were just talking about. Q Ball. Yes. <laughs> Big shout out to Q Ball, the man with the pretty voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what led to you joining the Dusty Donuts DJ squad earlier this year? Um, um, you know, Corona came in and, um, also I was, I wasn't not, I was not hanging out with Mark Hype a lot. Uh, we know each other, but we never actually talked. And, um, so he was the, one of the very first DJs in Berlin that, uh, came up with live streams, DJ live streams. And I have seen that and I was like, Hey, Mark, um, could I, could I also stream from, from your house, uh, like make, make a set. And he was, yeah, sure. And then he said, what do you think about making a 80s 45 throwdown mix? And I said, I don't even know. I don't have any 45s, uh, 80s rap. That's too crazy. And he said, I, I have a bunch. Let's, uh, we, we, we all use mine. And, and, and then we just nice. met and we made it happen and came out with two uh, 80s um, mixes. And you can listen to it on, on Unops Jobs. At Brooklyn Brooklyn Radio. Radio. <laughs> mm -hmm. I found that too, and I was like, "Look at them!" Yes. Um, so you had just finished up a tour with Contra K when the pandemic hit. What was it like playing to a crowd of forty thousand at, <clears throat> at Rock and Ring in Germany last summer? That was crazy. You know what? That was actually I was the the newbie in the in the band, and right. that was actually my my third gig. There was a whole weekend, so it started with. 25 no, with 15,000 people and I was like wow that's big next day <laughs> rock, next day rock and park I think there was 20 25,000 people and then like rock am ring there was 40,000 people like you, you can't imagine there's uh -oh. like that's like a like a like a sea like a like just like a field yeah, of people you, can't you, can't, mm -hmm. you don't see no faces anymore that's that's so crazy and um Adrenaline is, is super high and <laughs> it's crazy and it, it felt so good and I couldn't even, um, it, it took some time to, to calm down and to realize what just happened. But I believe it. Also, like, uh, we were well prepared and, and you can't, you can't go wrong because you practice so good and, you know, and also the, um, the experience, you know, that's, that's very good. If you do something for so many years, you, you are well experienced to, you you're not um going crazy too too quick not just doing it off the cuff yeah <laughs> yeah right, right um how did you come to work with andy cooper on his latest album listen oh andy cooper i know him for 15 years now um almost he has uh he has been to berlin for so uh, many times with ugly duckling and um um, I think my friend Dino from True Beats Crew, he invited me uh, to to a, to a party or to his home and he was hanging out there. And so I got to know, I had the time, the opportunity to talk to Andy and Dizzy and Young Einstein. And uh, yeah, I got a familiar thing, I would say. And now <clears throat> I'm, I'm actually um, very, very uh, good friends with, with Andy and we have so much collaborations going on. And he, he's calling me up and asking if I could do some cuts uh, for his new record. And, and that's very, that's, that's very nice. And um, yeah. I'm very proud that, that he's calling me and yeah, and I can call him and he's delivering uh, rhymes so quick and, and yeah. Very nice. Fun. Good uh, yeah. Uh, so you were involved with the Together for Moria online charity festival, which took place in October as a way to raise awareness for the inhumane conditions in Moria. What did it mean to you to be a part of this effort? Um, I mean, that was no question um, to be a part of it because the whole Corona situation is like a, also very, very like a, a big problem for the world. But you have to think about that. There are even other more people that even ha like it's it, uh, it's more worth, you know, life is more worth for them. Like they get burned, burned out and all that shit. You know, they don't have no food to eat and all this stuff. So like the like we we are we're actually safe you know we can we can we, we can we have a house you know we can be here you know we don't have no work okay but we get paid anyway somehow from the state you know but there's a, people they don't have no home and all that and it's so you gotta you gotta be there for them and um represent and uh, yeah 
so no question. Nice. Uh, your first ever scratch record, the Cure 7 inch, was released early last month and was very well received. What can you tell us about <laughs> the Cure Con? <concept? laughs> <laughs> well, you're so prepared with your gadgets and gizmos. Um, what can you tell us about the Cure Comp with the deadline of the 4th of December fast approaching? Um, yeah. Get that record. <laughs> practice <laughs> and take part. No, it's, um, it's actually, it's also crazy to see. Um, we have uh, three judges. That is uh, DJ Woody, DJ Scratch Bassett, and me. We will judge all the uh, competitors. And um, yeah, it's it's all about um, you know I'm I'm very good in in phrasing, word cut phrasing. So that's uh, actually what mm -hmm. is on the record, like um, full sentences and word cuts, and it's something different because most of DJ scratching are fresh and sound effects, right? But right. really, being being good and um, in phrasing is, is is not it's not that easy. So that's actually a competition for showing up show your phrasing skills whatever you like and um be creative and um and get in judge by scratch bastard Woody yeah. and me. i mean it's amazing you know? able to like, sit on a panel with scratch bastard <laughs> exactly somehow you know like I don't know what it is, but it's crazy once you judged me twice <laughs> yeah exactly even, even woody judged me and now we're sitting in the same boat it's crazy mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so you were part of the 45 Kings Germany live stream in August, as well as a special guest on their weekly coffee and donuts live stream show channel last month. Right. Will there be more like these coming up in the not too distant future? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I really got to know the, the 45 um, family in Australia. So um, they also, they, they've been locked up for six months, half a year lockdown, like, not not allowed to go out and all that shit. So they were just hanging out uh, in their in their houses and rooms and so and and the forty five scene, uh, Mr. Lop, um, he did a lot for the scene. Uh, he he's he's running the whole website. He's inviting uh, DJs from around the globe, um, and 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 he gives he gives us um, an opportunity to play uh, dope records and 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 and. Yeah, the community is, is is sharing a lot of joy and 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 ah, what record is that and this and <laughs> so 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 good. So that's only one of the forty five supporters. And as I have to uh, announce that also the Dusty Donuts crew is is very big in the uh, forty five scene. And um, yeah, it's it's good. Nice. I uh, want so to do that as well. And and there will be more live streams, of course. Right. <laughs> uh, where can where can people stay aware of those on here? Say it again, please. <clears throat> is there somewhere other than Instagram where people can know about those, or is it is Instagram kind of the best place to learn about any of your upcoming streams? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm very active on Instagram. Uh, there is a Facebook page a page I'm running, but um, Facebook is going down, and I don't really like it anymore so much. So um, actually, I don't post like much it. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, I try. I try to be diligent on um, on Twitter as well, but also Twitter is really uh, hard to um, to generate followers and all that. Like the game starts from zero again, and um, it's so so. I must say, IG is the uh, my my platform, okay. and yeah, where I have the most people that can see me. Yeah. Uh, so last week, Smith and Smart played a set from a shop window in Moabit. Can you talk a bit about your set? <laughs> that was that was very fun because it was uh, it was in the in a store of a of an optician. Oh. <laughs> that was an <laughs> optician, and he had really like that, that small window. So it was like a one square meter, two square meters, I don't know. And we put up turntables, a microphone, speaker boxes, bang. And then free could, any, could anything else fit in there? I just saw the size of that window. <laughs> not, not, not really. That was it. And and then uh, my my partner Maxwell, he was freestyling uh, about the people um, crossing the streets. Like some were in front of the optician, and uh, they were the crowd, and uh, with distance, of course, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we wanted some money. It was it was actually busking. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time so much. Do you have anything else that you want to add or promote? 
Um, uh, I don't know. Like, stay, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and um, yeah, keep, keep, uh, keep d diligent. Like, be diligent and, and do the best for you and yours. And um, yeah. Do you have anything you want to promote? Anything coming up? Um, the Cure. <laughs> Buy the Cure record. I want to get sell out, sold out with the record. So uh, no, it's um. Oh, Wednesday's on, on Wax tomorrow. Live stream with DJ Ari from the Netherlands. Uh, come and watch um, Nine CET. Uh, what is it, Brooklyn time? That's three o'clock Brooklyn time. All right. Three o'clock so, Eastern. Right. So if you uh, feel kind of bored or have to kill time, uh, tune in tomorrow. Wednesday's on Wax. That's the Donuts channel. Twitch. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> I hope, you have a good, hope you have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Hey, thanks for having me. Peace. Thanks for joining.